Section 2 of the Aesop for Children. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Hallie Kill. The Aesop for Children by Aesop. The Dog, the Cock, and the Fox. A dog and a cock, who were the best of friends, wished very much to see something of the world. So they decided to leave the farmyard and to set out into the world along the road that led to the woods. The two comrades travelled along in the very best of spirits, and without meeting any adventure to speak of. At nightfall the cock, looking for a place to roost, as was his custom, spied nearby a hollow tree that he thought would do very nicely for a night's lodging. The dog could creep inside, and the cock would fly up on one of the branches. So said, so done, and both slept very comfortably. With the first glimmer of dawn the cock awoke. For the moment he forgot just where he was. He thought he was still in the farmyard, where it had been his duty to arouse the household at daybreak. So standing on his tiptoes, he flapped his wings and crowed lustily. But instead of awakening the farmer, he awakened a fox, not far off in the wood. The fox immediately had rosy visions of a delicious breakfast. Hurrying to the tree where the cock was roosting, he said very politely, "'A hearty welcome to our woods, honored sir. I cannot tell you how glad I am to see you here.' I am quite sure we shall become the closest of friends. I feel highly flattered, kind sir, replied the cock slyly. If you will please go round the corner to the door of my house, and at the foot of the tree my porter will let you in. The hungry but unsuspecting fox went around the tree as he was told, and in a twinkling the dog had seized him. Those who try to deceive may expect to be paid in their own coin. Belling the Cat the mice once called a meeting to decide on a plan to free themselves of their enemy, the cat. At least they wished to find some way of knowing when she was coming, so they might have time to run away. Indeed, something had to be done, for they lived in such constant fear of her claws that they had hardly dared stir from their dens by night or day. Many plans were discussed, but none of them was thought good enough. At last a very young mouse got up and said, I have a plan that seems very simple, but I know it will be successful. All we have to do is hang a bell around the cat's neck. When we hear the bell ringing, we will know immediately that our enemy is coming. All the mice were much surprised that they had not thought of such a plan before. But in the midst of rejoicing over their good fortune, an old mouse arose and said, I will say that the plan of the young mouse is very good, but let me ask one question. Who will bell the cat? It is one thing to say that something should be done, but quite different to do it. The Eagle and the Jackdaw An eagle swooping down on powerful wings seized a lamb in her talons and made off with it to her nest. A jackdaw saw the deed, and his silly head was filled with the idea that he was big and strong enough to do it as the eagle had done. So with much rustling of feathers and a fierce air he came down swiftly on the back of a large ram but when he tried to rise again he found that he could not get away for his claws were tangled in the wool and so far was he from carrying away the ram that the ram hardly noticed he was there the shepherd saw the fluttering jackdaw and at once guessed what had happened running up he caught the bird and clipped its wings that evening he gave the jackdaw to his children what a funny bird this is, they laughed. What do you call it, father? This is a jackdaw, my children. But if you should ask him, he would say he is an eagle. Do not let your vanity make you overestimate your powers. The Boy and the Filberts A boy was given permission to put his hand into a pitcher to get some filberts. But he took such a great fistful that he could not draw his hand out again. There he stood, unwilling to give up a single filbert, and yet unable to get them all out at once. Vexed and disappointed, he began to cry. "'My boy,' said his mother, "'be satisfied with half the nuts you have taken, and you will easily get your hand out. Then, perhaps, you may have some more filbert some other time. Do not attempt too much at once.'" End of section 2. Recording by Hallie Kill.